Hey squad, welcome back. Now today I'm continuing my comparison of Logic Pro X, Ableton Live and Pro Tools. And in particular, on this occasion, I'll be looking at the different types of tracks you can create and manage across all three doors. Now the example song I'm using for this demonstration is my new release entitled 1985, which you can hear as the bed under this intro. Now I'd be very grateful if you check this song out. It's available on all streaming platforms and the links are in the description, or you can go to my doospeaks.com website where you'll find all of the links straight there to Spotify, Apple Music, and so on. on on the screen about now you'll see a link to the playlist that covers this entire three-way comparison series which I started several weeks ago and I'll be adding more and more to it over time. There's tons of other content on my channel which you might find useful so do remember to check those out. Anyway to start off with we're going to be jumping straight into the Logic Pro X portion of this series so let's get started. Okay, so here's my song opened up in Logic Pro X and all of these regions you're looking at right here are audio stems, okay? We haven't got any software instrument tracks, just audio tracks. So I'm just gonna quickly go through and show you how this is all laid out, how it kind of works in Logic. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take a quick look at the Logic screen layout, right? So here in the center, you have got your recordings, whether they be MIDI recordings, audio, or loops, and they run from left to right, so in sort of timeline format. So let's just play back to give you an example. Okay, so the playhead runs from left to right, and you've got a ruler up here monitoring the beats and bars. Um, you can also have another ruler displaying time in minutes and seconds. So we've got our regions here. All of these regions are audio regions. These are stems that I've pulled in for the demonstration. So each of these is actually a track or a track lane running from here and across horizontally. If I click here, we've, we're on another track and say down here, we're on yet another track. But each time I move around, the track selected is linked to this channel over here. So this is our channel strip for hats three. So let's make an adjustment. Let's pull this down. And if I was to click on ride, this is the channel strip for ride. And you can see the name or title of the track or channel strip up here and so on as we move along. This channel or track right here is our main stereo out, okay? So that's pretty much there the whole time unless you're working with buses or auxiliary channels and that will disappear for a while. But in the main, that is pretty much there the whole time. So that's the significance of these two tracks or channel strips right here. So to start off with, if I wanted to create a new track, we'd go to this icon right here, hit this button, and you see we've got one, two, three, four, five options that you can choose from. I previously covered Logic Pro X track creation in more details in previous videos, and you'll see links on the screen anyway. Let's start off with software instrument. So if we were to create one of these, we can choose the type of software instrument we want to create. And here's a whole bunch of uh, different types. Let's say, for example, we went for alchemy. We could click on alchemy here and hit create. And you'll see over here, the alchemy synth has been loaded up. If we click that, the synth will now load, which is this. And over here, we've got all of the categories that you can choose from in alchemy. Okay. These are the different synth categories related to alchemy. However, if we went back in, let's delete that track. And we just went back in. We again created a software instrument, but this time we had an empty channel strip. Hit create. Now the track itself is empty and we can choose now the type of instrument or sound source that we want to use. If we went to the piano category, we can choose the Bosendorfer, which loads up straight away, or Steinway piano, or we can scroll back and we can choose maybe different types of basses, okay? And they load up right here. These are all of the categories that we can choose from when choosing the software instrument that we want to load. Um, this is the library section over here. And to switch it on and off, the key command is letter Y and that switches it on and off. Okay, so that's your software instrument track. 
Let's delete that. Go back in and let's click to create a new track. This time we're going to create an audio track. And again, the audio tracks are very simple. I can choose a single input one, input two, or two inputs. I'm just going to stick to input one. I'm going to hit create. And now I've created an audio track. Okay, so here's your audio track channel strip. And I can choose now some presets that one can associate with different types of audio sources. So let's say, for example, I was going to record or mix some vocals. I can go to voice and maybe I can add bright vocal here. And what will happen is Logic will automatically load up some presets for mixing and shaping a vocal. So these are all your plugins right here. Click once to view the plugin. Okay, so let's just move this over here. Click again for the exciter and that comes up. Okay, and you can make your adjustments. Let's say, for example, I wanted to try something a bit different. All I do in the library again, I click classic vocal and the preset changes and a whole new collection of plugins are inserted. Of course, you don't have to go with these. You can um, create your own. So if I was to click here on classic vocal and I was to reset channel strip, we're back to normal and I can insert my own plugins, the ones that I actually want to use. Okay, so maybe a compressor. Here's my Dynamics compressor. Okay, so I'm not going to go into too much depth um, as to how the actual channel strips work. I'm just giving you an overview on the differences between Logic's channel strips and, or tracks and the other two doors that we're covering. So we're going to go back here and the key command for creating a new track, as you can see right here, is command option N. So let's do that. Okay. And that pulls up a new track. And this time we're going to go for a drummer track. Again, we've covered this in another video and I'll try and get a link on the screen for you to be able to check that out in more detail. Anyway, you can choose the genre of the drummer. Let's go for R and B and we're going to hit create right here. And here's your drummer and the drama track is right here. Let's solo this and play this back. Okay, again, I've, ch I've already covered this in another video. So you just follow the link and you'll see how powerful the Logic drama tracks are and how flexible they are when you incorporate them into your project. So now the other type of track we're gonna use is of course, external MIDI. So let's say you've got an external MIDI device, a hardware synth or drum machine or sampler, then you set up your MIDI controller and you hit create and right here, you'd get your MIDI track. I haven't got anything connected at the moment MIDI wise, so that I'm not gonna be demonstrating that. But for those of you who do use external MIDI devices, this will be fairly straightforward. Okay, go back in again and we're going to create guitar or bass track. Let's hit that. This is quite handy as well. For those of you who want to get some great Logic guitar and bass presets already inserted into your channel strip, this is the one you want to go for. So let's hit create right here. Here we go straight away. An audio track has been set up for you. So this is an audio track and you can choose from all of these different presets. Okay, so we're on um, Brit and Clean. These are the preset plugins that come with it. And as you run your guitar through each of these presets, you'll hear the tonal changes and maybe you can pick one of these as a starting point and then shape it to your own desire. Okay, very, very handy indeed. This has been covered in another video. So um, again, I'll try and get the link up on the screen. When you scroll back like so, you can choose whether you want the guitar categories or the bass categories. Okay, so we've got clean bass here. So these are all the clean bass presets that you can choose from. Scroll back or experimental bass presets. There we go. Uh, scroll back again and, and the guitars are at the top. This is how everything lines up in the mixer. Now these tracks have not been mixed. They're just stems that have been pulled into Logic and um, been laid out ready for mixing, okay? The mix has been done in another Logic project. However, this is just for demonstration purposes. We can scroll up and we can see more of the channel strip or we can come over to window and go to open mixer. And now you can see what can be inserted into each strip. So let's say for example, we soloed this kick drum. 
okay um, what we can do is we can adjust a whole lot of parameters along here but we could also insert plugins in this section we can set up sends and returns along here by creating effects buses we can group things together set up automation modes along here and this is incredibly flexible now there are a couple of other track types that i want to demonstrate real quick before we move on and these are to do with grouping tracks together so right here as you can see i've got all of these drums and percussion in a group and sometimes you might want to control all of these together by one fader right so what i'm going to do i'm going to head over to the mixer and just down here we've got all of our drums and percussion selected i'm just going to come up to here and where it says stereo out i'm going to click and hold there and i'm going to go to bus and i'm going to select bus 10 because generally speaking for me i prefer to send my drums to bus 10 you can send them to any bus you like but for me bus 10 seems to work so i'm going to title that drums and this right here is my drum bus so if i was to solo this right now right so as you can see my drums are coming through there so we're controlling the sum output of all of our drums with a single fader now there's another type of track you can create called a vca track and vca stands for voltage controlled amplifier so now we're going to do the same for our drums so what we're going to do now is we're going to group our drums together and we're going to, so we're going to highlight all of these all right drums and percussion together we're going to come just here do you see where it says group right here and we're going to select click on that and we're going to go to group one okay and as you can see all of these are now going to group one and up here we've got some parameters open up i'm going to just title this as drums and enter so group one is now drums now we need to be able to control group one so in order to do so we need to create a vca fader so we're going to come to here under options and we are going to choose create vca fader for selected channel strips okay and we click that and right down the end just past the master fader is our vca controller so i'm just going to title that as drums and cool so that's there but i'm not happy with the position of where it is and it's a bit tricky trying to move this along if you try to grab it it won't move um, before we start messing with the fader i want to position it just underneath our um, drums so it's easy to access in fact i'd like it just down here so the way to do that let's go back to the mixer you enable your automation mode okay and now that the automation mode has been enabled let's go back to the mixer you'll see right here our drums vca fader appears and in fact if we go back to the mixer right now it's disappeared from where it was now that we've got the vca fader in position the next important thing we need to do is to tell it which group uh, we want it to control we need to click here and go to group one drums and now if i pull this down all of my faders actually move down and now what i'm going to do i'm actually going to switch this off no group and i'm going to move that around like so i'm going to switch that one off i'm going to move this up like so and just do a couple more right down to the actual probably about there and and i mean you'll see what i'm getting at in a second so i mean your drums are aren't always going your drum faders are not going to be flat like this they're going to be all over the place okay so now i'm going to switch this back on drums 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 and drums if i was to move this fader around you will see everything moves around in direct proportion to their setting okay so if i pull everything down flat like this everything at zero and then ease this up you'll see that they maintain the difference between the neighboring tracks okay so this is a really handy way 
and controlling all of the faders on each channel as a group using just a single controller. Okay, so I really do hope you found this part of the series useful. You'll find links on the screen for the other two parts. So I hope that you check those out. Now your feedback is absolutely welcome, whether you agree with what I'm saying or not. It's always great to understand how you're feeling about what I'm doing. And that helps me to develop the quality and type of content that I'm making for you. Finally, like the rest of the MTTC squad, remember to switch on your notification bell so you'll be informed when my next videos drop. I'm looking forward to catching up with you real soon. I'm Dr. Deuce. Peace.